Imagine having injuries to your back, legs, arms, hands, or shoulders. Injuries from work operations are very common. Cumulative trauma disorders refer to disorders of the muscles, nerves, tendons, ligaments, joints, cartilage, or spinal discs that are not typically the result of any instantaneous or sudden effect. Most cumulative trauma disorders arise from injuries that develop gradually over time. Permanent damage to your muscles, tendons, joints, and ligaments will affect your well-being. The purpose of this video is to describe common risk factors associated with cumulative trauma disorders, identify situations at Rocky Flats that involve decontamination and decommissioning operations that may have risk factors, and present situations at the site that use work practices, methods, and or control measures to reduce risk. At Rocky Flats, there are several job tasks performed during decontamination and decommissioning operations that have been identified as having potential risk factors. By using ergonomic techniques and good work practices, the potential exposure to these risk factors will be reduced. Occupational risk factors are actions in the workplace that may cause or aggravate a cumulative trauma disorder. Certain risk factors have been associated with the development of these disorders. Examples of these risk factors include repetition, excessive force, awkward body posture, vibration, temperature, static body postures, and work organization. Job tasks performed at Rocky Flats with potential risk factors include those requiring forceful or prolonged exertions, frequent or heavy lifting, pushing, pulling, or carrying of heavy objects, prolonged awkward body posture, contact with tools and sharp edges, and vibration. The repeated effects of a combination of these risk factors particularly those occurring at high levels, may cause you to have a cumulative trauma disorder. These repeated effects can adversely affect your health, well-being, and productivity. Forceful exertion can place higher loads on the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints. Exposure to large forces over time results in muscle damage. Any prolonged or recurrent exposure to excessive forces may cause fatigue, especially when there is inadequate time for rest and recovery. Force requirements may increase with the weight of the load, the bulkiness of the load either lifted or handled, using an awkward posture, a quick work pace, slipperiness of the objects handled, vibration, forcefully gripping an object by using the index finger and thumb, and using small or narrow tool handles. In order to reduce the exposure to occupational risk factors, a three-tiered method is commonly used. This method uses engineering, administrative, and personal protective equipment as controls to reduce potentially hazardous exposure. Engineering controls are the preferred method to reduce exposure to risk factors and control the development of CTDs. Administrative controls, or work practice methods, refer to actions such as providing training and instruction on work practice technique, hiring more employees to perform the job task, and rotating employees. Personal protective equipment is any equipment that provides protection between the worker and the hazard source. A combination of these control measures should be employed to reduce exposure. Commonly recommended control methods used to reduce or eliminate exposure to force include the following. Reducing the weight of the load. Balancing tools with a counterweight system. Using hand trucks or push carts for job tasks that require you to carry the load. And avoiding pinch grips whenever possible. Prolonged contact with edges, such as the sides of a glove box, impedes blood flow to the hands and wrists. This may cause pain and could lead to the development of a cumulative trauma disorder. This can occur when leaning on the glove boxes, using the small shears to cut off personal protective equipment, and using tools with unpadded or narrow handles. Commonly recommended control measures include padding sharp edges with tape, purchasing tools with longer handles, and purchasing scissors with larger finger holes. 
Poorly designed tools affect the amount of grip force used by the worker. Personal protective equipment may make the situation worse. While designed to protect the user from radioactive hazards, the size, shape, and number of gloves affect grip strength while holding tools. Some tools may cause contact stress on the hand by pressing into the soft tissues causing pressure on the nerves and blood vessels. Ways to reduce exposure to this problem include counterweighting the tool, using the correct tool for the job, limiting the amount of time using the tool, and getting trained on proper tool use. Vibration is another risk factor. For example, this situation shows an employee using a sawzall to cut the legs off of the glove box. Notice the vibration moving through the hands, wrist, and arms. Exposure to vibration may cause an involuntary increase in the grip required to hold the tool. Awkward body postures determine which joints and muscles are used in an activity and the amount of forces and stress that would be generated or tolerated. For example, more stress is placed on a bent or twisted back when lifting, lowering, or handling objects compared to when the back is straight. Set work surfaces below elbow heights, especially for those tasks requiring heavy physical effort. Use lift tables whenever possible. Avoid fixed or working postures in which you must hold an arm or a leg in an extended position. Use a mechanical device to hold pipes or other equipment. Ensure that support devices are available for those situations when awkward body postures must be maintained. For example, use the right size ladder for prep operations or during glove box dismantling operations. Manipulative or other tasks requiring repeated or sustained bending or twisting of the knees, hips, wrists, or shoulders also put increased stress on these joints. Activities requiring frequent or prolonged work over shoulder height can be particularly stressful. Limit overhead work whenever possible. Use ladders or other devices to reach the height of the work. Additionally, there are non-occupational issues such as age, general physical fitness, and hobbies that can contribute to the development of CTDs. Remember that what you do off the job will also contribute to what you do on the job. In general, the better shape you're in, the less likely you'll experience a cumulative trauma disorder. Being in good shape means your body is more flexible, has increased strength, and has increased cardiovascular endurance. As workers, you need to recognize situations that may contribute to the development of a cumulative trauma disorder. Take care of yourself to prevent an injury. By staying in shape, using the tools available, and practicing good body mechanics, the chances of having a debilitating cumulative trauma disorder can be reduced. This video was designed to enhance your knowledge about methods available to describe risk factors present during your work operations, to describe general work practice methods when working inside the tents, and to recognize situations where you might get hurt. You should now be able to identify situations that may pose a risk. As a worker, you are in the best position to identify potentially hazardous situations. If an injury occurs, promptly report it to your supervisor. If you have concerns or ideas for improving your job tasks or work operations, talk to your supervisor or the designated safety and health professionals.